you're buying that this Alabama D-word dynasty and dominance is good, not bad for college football. Yeah, it, it, it makes you want to tune in to see if a team actually has a chance to dethrone them. I mean, every single year, we're talking about Alabama football being at the top of the top. And for people who are in sports, it's like, well, I have fatigue. I'm so tired of Alabama. But you're paying attention to Alabama. You're hearing people talk about Alabama. You're paying attention to games to see whether, hey, is Jared Judy the real deal? Is Najee Harris the real deal? Is Devontae Smith, is that going to translate? All these different storylines get you to buy into how special of a team this uh, Alabama team has. And I will give Nick Saban so much credit. You know, same way I talk about Coach K. Your ability to be malleable over the course of your dynasty is everything. You have to be able to change with the times. Long gone are the days of Mark Ingram, Derrick Henry, ground and pounded. Now you're seeing more RPO principles. You're seeing more air rate principles. And, and I go back to the 2018 National Championship game when they were down double digits to Georgia. When they inserted Tua, ever since they kind of played with this spread offense, you know, he still can insert Najee Harris and company. But since then, they've had a top two offense. They've had a top two offense in college football. Like, and I think it's that reason, Zubin, that we, we watch this team and you love to hate them because you want to see them dethroned. Did some people get tired of seeing LeBron James and the Golden State Warriors in the World Championship game? Sure. But you knew it. You knew what was coming. And you still wanted to watch because you wanted to see LeBron dethrone Golden State. So for the same reason you hate it, you love to hate it because you want to see it go down. That's why you pay attention to it. There's, there's no fatigue for me. It's simple. Recruit better, find better players, and coach better. And you'll With be the in team. the mix. Do what Alabama does. Alabama finds the right players. They develop them. They turn them off to pros. So the next group of guys that they're recruiting, it's easy for them to recruit. USC did it for many years under Pete Carroll. It, it, you pick up the phone. You go to the high school, they see the logo, it's easy. They're looking to come and go to Alabama. They're looking to go to Clemson. You know, when you're winning, that's what it is. And when you're producing players at the next level, because let's not fool each other, Zubin, here. Mm -hmm. Guys play football to go make money. <laughs> they ain't mm. playing football because they want to go to Clemson and go to school. That was a lifelong dream. I mean, it was a lifelong dream to play football there. But do you really think it was a lifelong dream for them to go there and get an education? They're going to get the education when they're there, but they want to make money. They're putting their bodies in harm's way to make money. And when you're producing pros consistently, whether it's Mark Ingram, Amari Cooper, or, or, or uh, um, uh, Jalen uh, uh, or Harris or Judy or any of the guys that have come through Alabama, to go on and have success. Landon Collins, I mean, it's a, a number of guys because Alabama is rich in talent. They go to, out across the country to landscape. They go as far up as Seattle to recruit and all the way back to the East Coast in the Jersey area to recruit and all in between. And when they walk in with that logo, it's easy for them. They're going to win. They're going to produce. And if teams like Texas that Sark is going to can do some of those same things, We'll be, we'll be talking about Texas in the next year or two. Oklahoma, if they start to get the talent that could compete against the Alabamas, we'll be talking about Oklahoma. If USC start to get the talent like they had in the past that could compete against Alabama and Ohio State, we'll be talking about them. But until then, it's going to be about Alabama. And, Phyllis, think about this. Without knowing a thing, right, next year, uh, Bryce Young, who's likely going to be Alabama's – starting quarterback next year. And by the way, just when you think you know something, this hotshot kid, Bryce Young, came in. He took the final few snaps of the game yesterday. Key, you remember back? There were people that thought Bryce Young was going to unseat Mac Jones and be a true freshman starter. That's what many people thought in the offseason. You just have to let the regular season play out. But think about this. Next year, Ohio State's going to have a new quarterback. Clemson, for the most part, is going to have a new quarterback in Uyangalele. Alabama's going to have a new quarterback probably in Bryce Young. We'll see how it goes with LSU. They were injury ravaged at the position. They may have a new quarterback. Sight unseen key, I don't care what this guy Bryce Young is capable of doing. Alabama is just going to keep on rolling, whether it's Sark or not. For the last four years, think about this key, for the last four years, they played in the playoff or made it close to the playoff. And every single one of those years, they lost a coordinator, right? That's a big thing. 
for a lot of teams to lose an offensive or defensive coordinator. But these guys just keep on moving no matter who's coming in, who's coming out, no matter who's playing quarterback, how much experience they have, how little experience they have. And think about it. Second and 26, Jay referenced it, the championship game against Georgia. Second and 26, Tua hits Devontae Smith to win the championship. He, at that moment, people know who Tua was because people are hearing about Tua, replacing Jalen Hurts. Smith catches that ball, a virtual unknown at the time. He leaves with the Heisman and a couple of national championships, and he literally oh. hauled them both in. Well, he's the, the most decorated wide receiver in all of college football history. I don't know another one. I mean, all the awards, the, the hardware that you can get at that position, he's collected. There is no, this guy won the Belitnikov, this guy won the Heisman. No, he got them all. He got them all, the championship MVP, he got them all. So, look, he, he's a, a, a talent that I can't wait to see get to the next level to see exactly what he's going to be, what coaches think of him. I know he's going to run an amazing 40 when that time comes, so that won't be a problem. The only thing is what, what do coaches visualize him as at the next level? When he get on the scale, what's his height, weight, size going to be? We already know what his speed is going to be because there's certain coaches in the National Football League, they like certain type of players. Uh, he is dynamic. He's a lot like, as far as the pro comps go, Marvin Harrison, Antonio Brown, a lot of Hollywood Brown in him. You get an offensive coordinator that understands that his speed and his quickness will allow him to do some things. That he could turn some stuff out and be that guy. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.